Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. You're watching Drakewing Gaming. Oh, one moment. And... Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drakewing Gaming, sending me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, guys. Hope you have a wonderful day with friends, family, or just by yourselves. Anyway, I'm here to bring you some merry, jolly entertainment. So let's go ahead and jump right back in. It is 25 degrees Fahrenheit outside right now. And I'm all huddled up in my room with my laptop and my PJs. The blankets around me, so... Yeah, let, let's, let's, I'm ready to bring you guys some entertainment. Let's jump right in, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's friggin' go. Alrighty, where were we? Okay. <clears throat> what? Could be, what could be worse than obscurity? The old male chuckles, pushing a large wooden box towards my wolf. Here, take a good look. Guard it with your life. He says rather sternly, and I observe as Rennick carefully lifts up the lid. Almost like in a movie, the hall floods with a golden shimmer and powered by the sunlight creeping in from the various windows. Holy shit! I find myself exclaiming at Rannick, spurred by the sight of more gold than I could have ever imagined. It's all arranged into slender, glimmering bars adorned with the familiar Celtic knot motif packed tight inside the chest. I'm sure I would have been utterly terrified at the slip of tongue had I not still reeled from the glimpse of unimaginable riches glowing right in front of me. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Chief grumbles, narrowing his eyes at me as I cover my mouth. Ha! <laughs> What's a dent in the whole noble theory if a mere, if a mere case of ingots gets him this excited? Rethera adds rather sternly, causing Rennick to finally flinch in my defense. I guess the wolf was equally as shocked that I spoke up as I currently am. It's just a phrase. He's not dumb after all. He's just picking things up with each day. Precisely. The advisor cuts Rennick off, looking at me with the same penetrative gaze I've seen before. Least said, soonest mended. But the chief dismisses the whole thing with a wave of his paw. I can almost feel myself in Rannick internally to release, releasing deep sighs of relief. Ruther nods at his friend as his friend's wishes and simply regards the case of gold on the table. There's 32 bars. Altogether worth, I'd say, 1,300 talents. I still think that's a bit too much. The chief's voice is filled with concern as he reluctantly glances over the treasure. I wouldn't say so. Perfect, perfect amount to establish credit, especially if they want to have a favorable accommodation. Hmm. Very well. The old male nods and looks to his son sternly. Deposited at the town hall. The treasurer should provide you with coin in turn. Spend it wisely, as we'll expect full accounting upon your return. In other words, don't be too frivolous. Aether glances towards me with an oddly serious expression, as if he was implying something. Wouldn't dream of it. Rennick responds almost immediately, clearly offended at the suggestion and his father nod, satisfied with the answer. Right. Do you remember what we talked about? Yeah. Yes. The wolf responds quietly, and I dart my gaze between them. So, you don't need a refresher? The chief asks, forcing a solemn shake of Rannick's head. Good. You know what to do. I'll see the magistrate and secure those trade rights. You better do, otherwise we're fucked. Rither shifts uncomfortably in his chair, looking towards the pantry. With a clap of his paws, the brown male draws Trist back into the main hall. Now! He nods to the bunny, and we both look in surprise as it quickly rushes back into the side room, only to emerge with two sizable linen parcels. Cora insisted on preparing your provisions. It should last you two nights in case you come up empty-handed. That's very thoughtful of her. Rennick takes hold of the packages, echoing my very own sentiment. Indeed. She's very taken by you. Do not disappoint her. Wouldn't dream of it. Good. That's it, then. The chief rubs his paws together and shoes us away. Off you go, and make us all proud. The wolf nods and approaches the table, shutting close the chest and locking it securely with a pad. To my surprise, the box has a leather strap attached to it, which allows it to be, thro to be thrown over one shoulder and carried like a side bag. My chief! Rennick takes a deep bow, then nodding slightly towards the brown male, and I decide to do the same. Vithir! We back away slowly from the hall, only turning, our, only turning our backs once we're in the atrium proper. Rennick stops near one of the lounges, placing down his heavy load. That was a bit careless of you, he utters in a semi-harsh tone. I'm sorry, I was taken aback by, well, this. I point to the wooden chest and he sighs. It's fine, they didn't seem to mind. Do you think they suspect? I ask, not really sure what to make of their indifference. I don't know, but I don't think it matters now. He says in a hushed tone and looks cautiously back towards the hall. 
I stand awkwardly to the side, not sure what to say as he's correcting the fastening of the chest. That's okay. Once he has it, once he has it adjusted, he hoists the gold onto his arm again and we proceed to leave. At first, I thought he might have been cross with me, but he quickly smiles back, clearly happy to be on the way. I decide to wait until we leave the villa grounds entirely until I speak up again. No point running my mouth with the bunnies watching, especially Leaf. She's really dead set on sending me spiteful gazes. Truth be told, she reminds me of Trist in that sense, but unlike him, she has no actual reason to dislike me. So why is she staring me down so intently? But in all honesty, I don't care. I have bigger problems to worry about, and right now, even they have to take a back seat. I finally get to leave this place and explore the world, even if just for a little bit. It's exactly like we talked about those very first few days. When we veer onto the road, I take a deep, exaggerated breath. That meeting was oddly cold and abrupt. Then again, how can I blame them with that, when that fat bitch pops up everywhere like a jack-in-the-box? A what? He snorts in amusement, and I add another word he might not understand. You know, one of those mechanical toy thingies. It has a puppet on a spring that leaps out of a box when you open it. You really are a noble. He continues to chuckle, causing me to shake my head. How are your shoes, my lord? Would you like a Gudetama eggplant? Egg, egg, would you like a Gudetama egg platter, my lord? <laughs> They're all right. I look on my foot teasingly. The leather soles slip every now and then, but a gentle tap with the side of my foot pushes it back in place. I say, I state, but, the, but his confused expression betrays he has no idea what I'm talking about. Anyway, I'm sorry about the slip-up. Forget about it. Forget about it. He waves his paw at me. With everything happening, I don't think they even care. They have lots more important things to deal with. Summoning a house and something we do lightly. He says in a serious tone. In fact, the last one took place when I was just a young pup. I bet they're making sure they have all their bases covered. Is it true what your father said at the feast? That if the elders removed him, Vithir would take his place? I guess. Full of shrugs and equal doubt. I was surprised for them to speak of it so openly. Before it was simply an unspoken assumption. There really is no one else as popular or prominent as Vithir. If the Hal had to choose a replacement, it would most likely be him. Which would mean you'd not be the heir anymore. I say that in a rather concerned tone, but he seems to almost lighten up at the prospect. Perhaps. Not gonna lie, that would be nice. But Dreher is no leader, and even if, and even if Vithir would, un, would appoint him as a successor, the Hal would never consent to it. Especially not with the current situation. A chief must have a clear successor, and both, and both should be figures others look up, look up to. So, who would become chief after Vithyr? Renick falls silent, and he might as well have given me an answer. Oh, you're kind of trapped, aren't you? I mutter gently, but he only sighs. We're all born with a single destiny and purpose in life, both written in the stars long before we were ever conceived. No schemes and plots could undo that. I was born to rule, and even if my father would be disgraced and Vithyr would take over, eventually my destiny would find a way to correct the course. It's good to hear you're at peace with that. I even, I even admire it. And not approvingly. You do seem to be born to lead. You could command respect, loyalty, and devotion to those around you. Vul, Verissa, even Regera will, Regera will follow you to the end. I saw the way she looked at you at the feast. I'd rather not relive that, if that's okay with you. <laughs> he says, completely deflated, almost tucking his tail in. The things Regera admires me for are not the things I'm proud of. Which is another reason why you'll make a great chief. You won't be ruthless or cruel. I try to encourage him, but he doesn't seem convinced. I'm glad you... I'm glad you say that, but life is never as easy as that. And you were right yesterday. If there's something I learned this this week, it's that I will do anything to protect those around me. That includes being ruthless and cruel if needs be. Wolf says in a rather serious, cold tone. Rather cold tone. Something I've never... Something I've never experienced from him this, this far. He's serious, and it's clear he has thought about it. He's thought it through. The idea of having become what he must become to defend his loved ones weighs heavily on him, and I just place my hand on his shoulder. But, can we not dwell on this? He asks with a quivering voice, and I nod. We have a long road ahead of us, and I'd rather we focused on the scenery. It's your opportunity to see Tiernan in all its glory. Oh, I don't think anything could, stop, could top what I saw yesterday. That, to me, was Tiernan in all of its glory. I say in a surprisingly confident and seductive tone, which even takes him takes me aback. What? The wolf just stops and stands there, gawk gawking at me in embarrassment. I decide to continue on as if nothing happened. I'm swinging my hip side to side as if we're on a catwalk, mustering all the provocativeness in my gait that I can pull off without getting com without being comical. Eventually, I hear him clear his throat and rushes rushes after me. I love his stride to bring him back to my side, and he clears his throat once again, trying to play it cool. 
I'm glad you enjoyed the views. Wish I dropped a coin. It's a site I definitely want to revisit. It's his stunned and flustered expression finally makes me snort ungracefully and I begin to chuckle. If you'd only seen your face. Hey! He mumbles uncomfortably. Don't make fun of me like that. Who said I'm making fun? I lean onto his arm, wrapping my hands around it. Although the timing might have been off, I want you to know that I very much enjoyed anything that did or didn't happen. I find myself sway saying gently with a heartfelt honesty and he smiles. So did I. He muses through a, tooth through a toothy grin. You're surprisingly attractive considering the lack of fur. My eyes open wide at this offhand compliment. One would expect a furless creature like to look like a sick pup. Oh, yeah, I get it. I cut him off rather harshly and pull away. Damn, your game really flew out the window there. For a moment, I really, I feel really feel offended, but it just takes a second for my humor to return and I laugh out loud. No, you're into sick pups. Now you make it sound creepy. He, he takes his turn being offended and I continue to laugh. Now, I felt a need to work on your comparison game. So what would humans say for how smooth you are? <clears throat> we say one skin is soft as a baby's... I almost choke at my realization. You know what? Never mind. Fuck poetic license. Most of it ends up creepy in retrospect. And with that, he laughs away as we continue through the next few hundred meters, just smiling and enjoying the morning stroll. The fresh air and the dewy scent of the woods really lightens up my mood. I need to keep it up, as it doesn't take long for my body to start straining under the weight of all the baggage I'm carrying on my back. But I won't complain. After all, Rannick, Rannick, is, Rannick is carrying God knows how much gold in that trunk. Still, the presence of such treasure fills me with slight unease. You think it's wise that we're traveling with all that wealth alone? What do you mean? The wolf asks, raising his brow. Don't you fear we could be ambushed, or... By whom? He cuts me off, and his voice takes on a more mocking tone. The immediate area is patrolled by our packs. Currently, Vul's and Varissa's wolves. Further beyond the outer alphas maintain order. You're safe here. He tries to sound reassuring, but I keep looking at him with a rather unconvinced expression. Even if we were to be attacked, do you think some downtrodden unfortunate could beat me in combat? No. I can see it through a sigh and snort at the fact that I almost sound disappointed. We're safe with that. We're safe within Tiernan. You have my word for it. What about beyond? The road to Strandbard is desolate and speckled with impoverished farmsteads. If you're a highwayman and you're operating there, you really don't understand the meaning of highway behind your profession's name. He, he stayed snarkily, and I can't help but laugh at his observation. True. So, how much exactly is three talents? I ask idly, toying with the idea of my very own price tag. Way too much. The wolf huffs, and I give him a worried look he clearly misreads, judging by his panicked reaction. Not that you aren't worth every penny, but... He sighs, rubbing his neck awkwardly. That amount is something that would take a ward three years to repay. Trist's own debt is at seven talents, and he incurred it on behalf of his entire burrow. Oh... I mumble awkwardly, looking to the ground while the wolf continues in a defeated tone. Paying that will set me back quite a bit. I I meant to use my money to pay off Triss, but now that seems quite unlikely. Well, you don't have to pay it, though, right? I ask, a bit confused by his sudden expression. I don't intend to run off while we're, I don't intend to run off while we're there. Oh, yeah, of course. He quickly straightens up and shakes his head dismissively. I wasn't su suggesting that at all, but we'll have to settle that debt eventually. Hmm. I narrow my brows. Something feels off about his erratic behavior, but I decide to let it be for now. Anyway, enough of that. The wolf waves his paws at me and comes to a stop. What's the matter? I wanted to show you something before we depart. He nods off. He nods off trail and me and, lean, and leads me towards the greenery. We make it. Th we make wade through quite a thicket, and I try my best to brush off all the stray leaves and branches. The heavy load I carry does not make the task any easier, but at least the but at least the improvised shoes come in handy. And I sally forth without a whimper, seeing Rannick brave through his through with it with his own payload. It takes some time to push where he wants us to go, but eventually he stops he stops me with a gentle pat on my shoulder. We're here, he says in a hushed tone, in a hushed voice, as he brushes aside the last bushes with his paw. Oh, his name tree. I stop dead in my tracks. With jaw dropping to my chest, with jaw dropping to my chest as I look upon his very own name tree. Oh, oh my! Is that? I ask out of courtesy than anything else, as the chiseled name in the trunk leaves no doubt what I'm actually looking at. Mm hmm. The wolf nods, watching happily as I drop my backpack and take shaky, humble steps towards the tree. I don't know why, but I'm suddenly overtaken by a powerful emotion. 
Almost as if I could sense the spiritual link between the tree and my wolf. It fills me with the same feeling of calm as he does. Almost as if Rannick's presence emanated from within. I dare not touch it, stopping mere inches from the bark and lowering my gaze in reverence. That's when I noticed the ground beneath it, with roots burrowing with roots, roots burrowing through the earth on each side. Is this where? Yes. He proceeds, he proceeds my question with an answer, walking up beside me. You lied at this very spot. In all fairness, seeing you standing here now feels almost surreal. It's almost like it seems like a dream. I can relate to that. I smile weakly, looking at his loveful muzzle. Although, I don't remember any of this. Somehow, I feel like I've been here before. I, I feel safe here and at peace. I'm glad to hear it. I feel the same. And that is why I always come here to meditate. I look back to the grass beneath my feet and crouch, reaching the, to the reaching to the blades with my hands. For some reason, I thought that there'd still be blood here. I mutter, noticing nothing of the sort. It's been two weeks. It's been two weeks since, and it rained. Remember? He snorts, approaching me with amusement. What wasn't washed out, the animals took care of. It's so strange standing here after all that happened. It's beautiful, though, growing tall and strong just as its namesake. Heh. <laughs> I look up at the towering crown above us, and we both smile in the we both smile in the gentle rustle of leaves. This place even smells like him. Would you mind if I ask, gesturing towards the tree with my hand as he shakes his head? Not at all. At first, I'm reluctant to touch it, almost like a pilgrim reluctant to touch a holy relic. But eventually, my veneration turns into a desperate need for affirmation. But when my hand connects with the hard bark, I feel as if I was thrown down the well. I almost hear the thunderous sound of my plunge into that murky grave. Disturb of my fall, the water grows dark and thick. All of a sudden, I'm back into the nothingness. A chill runs down my body as if I were laid down on ice. Breathing comes hard, and then it comes to a stop. Everything's gone, and I want to scream, but I no longer have control of my body. Not again. And my eyes open, but not really. Those are not my eyes. I watch like a person in a drive-in theater watches a movie. The eyes open, and they see the tree, but only for a moment. The darkness claims everything once more, and it takes a while until they open again. I'm almost out of my- I'm almost out of breath, submerged in the void. Suddenly, my lungs expand as if allowed to take one desperate gust of air, and I hear choking as the eyes blink in the light. I see the wolf. My wolf, standing above me. He's startled, panicked even, blood covering his paws. By the moon, you are alive? R Rannick? I hear a voice utter his name. It's my voice. What? Who are you? What happened? The memory of our first encounter returns to me. He was telling the truth. Not that I ever doubted him. I looked at him and uttered his name, and that's when the darkness returns one last time. I'm reliving that moment almost as if the tree showed it to me, and I'm immediate and I'm immediately reminded of the deer of the deer druid. Finally the spell is lifted, and I can hear the forest and the birds once again. I open my eyes, my own eyes this time. I can see his name carved into the bark. It's the first time I see it. I know I've never seen it before. I witnessed my I witnessed my glimpses of awareness before I woke up in the cabin. Laying there in the grass, I couldn't have seen it. It's fate. Whatever brought me here... Whatever brought me here, placed me in his care. I knew it from the very first day. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Like I said, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, y'all. I love you all. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, bring that notification bell. If a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Looking forward to the new year, y'all. Merry out!